Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to start a new series, Building a Robotic Vehicle. Let's get to it. Not going to lie, I'm kind of excited about this. Inside this box should be a kit for a Super Droid Robots MLT-42. I've never seen one before, never built one before. But this should be a fun project for the next few months. Let's get it open, see what's inside. Looks like a, well, a RC remote control handheld unit. In case you care about the part number. There you go. Some tracks. This is a track unit. And I'm pretty pleased. Those were pretty heavy duty. And it looks like oh, everything else is wrapped up in here. So let's get this box off the table and get this guy open and see what's in it. I think this is a bottom plate, top plate, something. I honestly don't know what a lot of these parts are. We'll know when we start putting it together. Obviously these are all part of the drive system. So these look like they're some sort of a, I don't know, it's a fiber material. I don't know exactly what it's made out of. It's not wood. Some sort of a plastic or some plastic that's got particles in it. Definitely not wood, definitely not metal. Those are metal. Twenty two hundred milliamp hour batteries. That seems really small. I suspect I'm gonna have to be upgrading those almost immediately, but We'll take a look. The motor controller. Another pair of these drive wheels. And a bag full of parts and pieces. Looks like the wheels run on bushings, which is fine. Bushings are good for high load and low speed. This is definitely not designed for high speed. We'll go through more detail on all of these pieces as we put it together. Overall, everything seems to be pretty good quality. This case is aluminum. It's got nice TIG welded corners inside and out welds so they didn't skimp here it was actually pretty well put together let's start assembly I went back and dug through the box to make sure nothing was missing found a couple of these these are just battery chargers for these lipos one thing that was peculiarly missing is instructions there's no instructions whatsoever on how to put all this together. Well, I went online and they do have instructions. This is what it's going to look like when it's complete. First step is to install the drive motors. It's like one of them goes here and the other one goes here. A little counterintuitive, I would have expected them both to be at one end, but just due to size, I can see why they aren't. It looks like there's no specific way that they go, so I'm going to mount them where these wires are kind of up so that I can get to them in the event I need to. Next up is to assemble the drive and idler wheels. Each wheel assembly requires one of these splined discs, 
or I guess toothed discs, one of these, and then the drive wheels use one of these. So we kind of sandwich these together like this for a drive wheel. And then the idler is just two of these like that. And you want to assemble it so that the nut goes on the inside. I'll assemble all of these, then I'll tighten those down with a wrench. Turns out there are long bolts and short bolts. The shorts are just for the idler. Okay, next we're going to put one of these idler wheels on. These idler wheels are also the track tensioners. So you're going to need the idler, which is going to go in one of these holes. You need one of these bolts with the different pieces. So it's got a, I guess, a collar here with a set screw, plastic washer, a couple of shouldered nuts, and then you need this bracket as well. Effectively, what we're going to do is this tensioner tab. It's going to bolt on here like this. This bolt is going to hold it in here. And then this bolt is going to hold the idler wheel on here. I guess like this. The small disc out. So washer toward the head. And right now, just hand tight so that it can move around. This is what will be used for tensioning that track. Now, just the bolt goes through the idler. Again, this goes to the outside, to the smaller circle. Then the plastic washer goes on. Then this collar. Then this nut. This nut goes with the shoulder toward the vehicle. So like that. And this whole assembly goes through here. We put a nut on the other side. So we end up with an assembly like that. And this allows you to move this back and forth to tension things. When you're doing these drive wheels, this shaft collar needs to be all the way against here but not so tight that it doesn't turn. So you still want it to be able to rotate inside these bushings, but not have really much end play at all. I found it was much easier to do this with it off the vehicle. Next, we're gonna put one of these drive wheels on. You've got a set screw. It goes onto the flat spot of this shaft on the motor, real simple. When you're doing one of these drive wheels, take this set screw all the way out, put some Loctite on it, and put it back into the wheel here, maybe. And then this screw tightens down against this flat spot on the, the motor shaft and you put it in make sure that the wheel isn't out like this that it is fully seated in there and then tighten it down all right we've got the chassis fully assembled next up we need to get the tracks on 
start by adjusting the idler as close to the drive wheel as possible. Then put it onto the idler so we've got these spikes on the idler wheel going through the holes in the track. And we just kind of walk it up on just one hole at a time around this drive wheel. Goes on pretty easily. Like that. And now we can push the idler forward here to tighten that track tension. I'm going to give it a few love taps with a hammer here. Now I'll tighten these bolts down. Then I'll repeat this on the other side. Alright, we have the rolling chassis built. Now we have to do all the electronics that go inside. I've been going through the mess of parts and pieces that came with this and unfortunately there are no good directions and there are no specific plug this into that type of instructions anywhere. So this is going to be a fairly complex thing that's going to require a lot of research. Obviously this is power and this is the encoder but it doesn't even say what signals go on each one I don't have another plug that matches that, so I probably have to cut it, but I'm not certain. Same thing here. I don't have a, you know, a male version of this, so I'm not certain where that goes. Got to figure out all the voltages, power distribution, things like that. So it's, it's going to be a complex process. Definitely is out of scope of this video. I'll probably break this into several videos. One for something like this which is our motor control then we'll have another one that handles the RC circuit for how we can control it from RC we'll have another one for things like sensors how do we talk to it from a microcontroller because we're going to have to put a PC or a microcontroller unit on here we'll probably use a Jetson Nano so we've got a bunch of things that have to go onto this and it is not at all obvious how to hook those up. So stick around. We're going to get this thing all together, get all the sub-assemblies routed, wired, add a bunch of sensors, add some logic and things like that. Hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.